tell me how the the draft went for you. Like when you you know when you were watching the draft draft weekend, uh, what was your experience like? Uh, I mean, there was a lot going on. Just from you understand that all of it is a like methodical thing to where you want players since there's a ranking to everything. So you want players who are ranked above you in your position to go. So then the demand of that position ends up be increasing. So, I mean, early early on in the draft for cornerbacks, the demand was pretty high. And then as it got to the mid-round, uh, it started to fall off a little. And I was projected as a late-rounder or a free agent. So, um, I mean, as that went on, it was kind of like uh, – I mean, you, you get, like, filled with little anxiety, just wanted to hear your name called. But um, – I didn't end up getting that, but I feel like I ended up in the right spot. And I ended up with the right opportunity in New England. So, uh, I mean, I'm excited for what's in store in uh, New England. Excited to be a part of the organization. So, how many teams were talking to you? Like, was did, when the draft ended, I know it's kind of like, a, as John Schneider calls it, the Wild West, man. Everybody gets on the phone and starts getting as many uh, undrafted free agents as they can for you. What was it like? Like, did you field a bunch of phone calls, your agent, or did you just kind of, um, you know, did you have a plan with the Patriots beforehand? Uh, we we kind of had a plan to uh, to go with a couple of teams if I wasn't drafted. So uh, we had a plan. We had a plan in hand before, and there were only about three or four teams on that list. But through the whole process, you talked to pretty much all thirty-two teams, and um, some some have you higher on the board than others. Some have you lower on the board than others. So, uh, I mean, as you get towards the draft, closer to the draft, you really find out which teams are actually interested. And then from there, you just move forward. And then we ended up finding that New England was pretty much the best fit for me just to, to get in there and be able to play. Yeah, was that it? Like when you look for the best opportunity to, to contribute right away, um, you thought the Patriots kind of were your best bet, huh? Yeah, I mean, some guys, they want to look at location. Uh, I mean, being a West Coast guy, I know I've had friends who went through the process and they're like, uh, I think I want to stay in the West Coast. So they end up in places like Arizona or California um, or even Seattle. But, I mean, I feel like I just want to get out there and play, and it doesn't really matter where that's at. And uh, New England is where I ended up, so happy to be a part of it. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting, though, that, that some guys actually, you know, use geography as um, kind of a basis of how they make their decision when it seems like that's not the smartest thing to do. Right. Uh, I mean, you got guys who, who like being comfortable in their, in their own realm. And, uh, I mean, you even have guys who have the opportunity to play for their home team. So, so I, I kind of understand why because they – They've grown up watching this team their whole life or something and then just have an opportunity to go out there and wear that uniform is pretty amazing. And, I mean, you see guys do it coming from Seattle, going to UW, and then being able to also come from Seattle and go to the Seahawks. So I think you got guys who, who want to fill those shoes and be able to uh, put on for their hometown. How about you? Like, you know, you're going to a storied franchise, man. That seems like all they do is win out there, and they're undergoing a huge change without their quarterback, but they still have Belichick there. Um, what are your feelings about going to that team and, and uh, being part of that organization? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I consider myself a football junkie, just a guy who likes to surround himself with football all the time, whether it be playing it, watching it on TV or even on the video game playing Matt, just always being surrounded by football every, every inch I can. And so far that's what I've received out there. Just you got a bunch of guys in that organization who just love football and their goal is to keep being the best that they can be. So uh, I feel like I'm in the right spot for that. I, I had great coaching in high school at uh, Loyola High School down in Los Angeles. And I think I had the best coach in it at UW with uh, Coach Peterson and Coach Lake. And now I have one of the most storied coaches in uh, NFL history and football history, Bill Belichick. So just having the opportunity to do that is, uh, I mean, it's, one, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and I'm, I'm just ready to learn. What would you say that your strengths are that you can bring to the, to the table for those guys? I think just uh, 
a guy who was a competitor. Um, I was telling all the teams in the draft, they asked me why I should be drafting. And I, I told them whether my team is up by 30 or down by 30, I'm going to compete with my butt off. And that's the way I was raised. That's the way I was taught to play the game. Um, coming from where, I'm from where I'm from, Pasadena, California, I used to play with older kids and bigger kids all the time. And, I mean, we wouldn't leave. If, if we were playing basketball, we wouldn't leave the court with my little group of friends until we won. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's just the way that, that we do things out there. So, just having that ingrained in me, I feel like that competitiveness is something that can help the organization. So was that uh, – you talk about – was it basketball, football? Was it any sport at that age when you guys were uh, mixing it up with the older guys? Yeah, so mostly uh, basketball. And then you'd end up playing some tackle football here and there. Uh, and then you really wouldn't play baseball. So baseball is kind of hard to organize since you need a lot more people. But, I mean, it was mostly basketball and football. And I feel like those experiences have kind of – thrusting me into where I needed to be in. I mean, that's the position I am in today. How about as far as, um, you know, other players? Like when you were growing up and you were a kid and you're, you're watching the NFL, did you have a favorite player? Oh, yeah, I had a few. Um, so I was one of those kids that they call a, a bandwagoner to where you, you bounce around and have uh, favorite different teams. But um, – I mean, I, my favorite team would all be predicated off who my favorite player was. So my favorite player was LaDainian Tomlinson down in San Diego. And then once he ended up moving on there and going to New York, then I found a, a new player in Devin Hester. So I love I love Chicago Bears. Uh, my dad's side of the family is from Chicago, so I love Chicago for a little. And then I moved on to San Fran. I really didn't have like a, a typical um, – player on the team that I liked, I just figured that they were a California team. And me being from California, I was like, I need a team now that I don't like the Chargers. And then I even moved on to Seattle when they had the Legion of Boom. And so I've really been all over the place. But, I mean, there's guys like uh, Ed Reed, LaDainian Tomlinson, Devin Hester, uh, even a guy who I don't think gets a lot of credit, Rondé Barber. And he kind of is the foundation of the nickelback position, which I play a lot. So I feel like he – he needs to get a lot of credit for what he's done, and he's uh, transformed the game and revolutionized the nickelback position. Yeah, man, Rondé Barber. I don't hear too many guys giving him a shout out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. The guy has like over 50, 50 interceptions or something, twenty eight sacks, and you don't really see that from a defensive back. So, I mean, he was a great player. How about is it is it somewhat frustrating for you because as a rookie? You're, you're having to do everything virtually and, and um, you can't meet your teammates or your coaches in person and you can't get in there and work out. I mean, I, I would imagine you're itching to get, to get started. Yeah, I mean, we go through our meetings and then we go over a bunch of calls and then you're just out there sitting down in front of your uh, tablet or laptop, whatever it may be. You're like, man, I just want to get out there and get to moving around. But um, I feel like the, the obstacle that's at hand is kind of – it's kind of going to challenge everybody to see who's really working and who's really uh, doing their homework. So um, I like to feel like I, I, I've been prepared for this opportunity for life and just really going out there and taking advantage of the time we have right now to do all my homework, do all my workouts, and make sure when it's training camp time that I'm prepared to go. Have you talked to anybody like um... – when you talk, it sounds like you've been schooled pretty well. Like you're, you're talking about being a good student, studying that playbook. Um, have you talked to any other uh, young NFL players, maybe guys you used to play with that have given you uh, some tips? Uh, I haven't talked to too many guys just on like the tips of the game, really more tips of stuff off the field, just how to, how to manage your money, um, how to, how to manage your time, you know, whether it's be studying your playbook um, and then also just finding balance. So, I mean, guys, all the guys who came before me, like Buddha, uh, Kevin King, Sidney Jones, um, even Byron Murphy, Taylor Rapp, Jordan Miller. Uh, I mean, my guy Taylor Rapp, he's doing wonderful things off the field. I know he was going to have his 
he's gonna have a football camp in China this uh I think it was this summer. So I mean he's doing wonderful things off the field. So just learning just learning that I can also do stuff on the field as well as stuff off the field and just trying to maximize all the time that we're given. You know, it's got to be somewhat surreal for you. Yeah, I mean, just growing up and seeing seeing the Patriots uh, pretty much my whole life just watching ball. Um, I remember watching the the Super Bowl when they, when they beat the Rams. And I was actually a Rams fan at that time because my older brother was. So that was one of the teams that I was – I was a fan of, and I remember the Patriots beating them and being upset. But uh, I mean, just a historic uh, coaching figure like that, just to be able to be on the team and see him for the first time, it's it's, it's amazing. But um, I feel like I'm just more excited to learn from just having a chance to pick his brain, uh, learn from his experiences, and him just try to make me a better ball player. You look at your, your opportunity here, and you know that I've heard players, many players in the past say, when you first get in the league, the first thing that you're told as a, vet, as a, as a rookie is get your, your nose in that playbook, and when you hit the field, a guy like Lawyer Malloy I talked to you recently where he was like, he, right from the start, he said, you, you have to know where you have to be um, out on that field because – if they call something and you're not familiar with it, you're going to look like, you know, you, you can't afford to do that as a rookie. Right. That, I mean, is that what your, your kind of approach is? Oh, yeah. And I learned that at UW. Just um, I remember my first couple of practices at camp just really questioning, like, man, am I cut out for this? Because you get a ton of information. Then you got guys that are bigger, faster, stronger than you. And then you're really just wondering, like, man, this is pretty tough for me to do. Um, how am I going to balance all this? But then I figured that you got to make sacrifices. So my sacrifice, my freshman year camp was sleep. And I sacrificed that for learning the playbook. And then by the time I really sat down and would go to sleep at like 1 a.m., uh, 12.30 a.m., just studying the playbook, I figured that I would go out there and I made plays. And Right now, I'm just learning from that experience that I went through my freshman year. And I know it's a faster game at the NFL level, but I'm learning from that experience that I had at UW and now taking that and translating it to the NFL. Is the Patriots playbook, like, you know, a foot thick or compared to your, your Husky playbook? Or, like, give me, give me an idea because I'll never know. Is, it, is, it a, is there a lot more to learn? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's always a lot more to learn just because they – they expect more from you now that you're a pro, but um, I'm mean, right now they've only given us limited information, and right now we're just expected to know it from front to back. So that's what we're doing right now, just making sure that we we know the calls like the back of our hand. What are you doing as far as staying in shape? Where are you working out? How you how you staying fit? Yeah, so I've actually had the opportunity to go to Roosevelt High School right there in the U District, and. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I train – I have a chance to train with some of the guys who I play with at UW, and we just condition. Um, we'll bring, like, dumbbells out there and stuff, and then we'll do our little position drills. And then, that, I mean, that's that's how I've had to stay in shape. And then it, just it, just doing stuff in, in my house. Um, I feel like when you when you want to be – when you want to be great, you'll always find a way to do it. So – that's what I'm trying to do right now, just find a way to, to stay in shape and also trying to be in the best shape that I've been in. As a young guy, you got to be really disciplined right now because it's real easy to just kind of hang out and the green light comes on to go to your team and you're not ready. So someone like you, uh, could, could you see this as an advantage? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's definitely how I see it. Um, I, I like to see all obstacles as, you know, as challenges and them coming out advantageous for me. So this is how I see this one. Just right now it gives me more time to to pretty much put my foot on the gas while other people relax. So that's how I've been taking it. Just trying to trying to stress myself out with with learning the playbook. I feel like if I do that now then I won't be stressed out during camp. So just trying to stress myself out learning the playbook trying to be in the best shape that I can since right now everybody has the the same amount of time. And, I mean, normally at this time I came back to finish my last quarter at UW, so I would be in classes and then I would have to go 
end up doing meetings and stuff. So it'd be all over the place. But now that I just have to focus on meetings and I'm able to do classes online and work out in the allotted amount of time, uh, I think it works to my advantage. Okay. And what's the degree in? Communications. Oh, okay. You want to be a, what, you want to be in a broadcast booth? Uh, I think I could do it. I think, I think I could analyze the game a little. What would be the ideal job for you? If, if, when you're through playing football? It's tough, man. Um, I feel like there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Uh, I feel like I want to stay around the game, not, not through coaching, but kind of like, um, like you said, broadcasting, um, or just being an analyst, help, help, uh, pretty much explain the game to other people, but also trying to trying to take the game of football globally. I feel like there's sports like basketball, baseball, soccer. Those are all global sports. And granted that football, you need a helmet and the shoulder pads, but I feel like all you really need is a football and you can go out there and play two-hand touch. So, I mean, that's something that I like to do in my lifetime, try to help football become a global game. I know football is popular in Canada. Um, it's emerging in Mexico, and the NFL is kind of trying to take it as an initiative to get it in London and get it in Europe. But uh, I really like to take it global. But, I mean, the stuff I like to do after football, there's a list of it. I feel like it's a couple of lifetimes worth of it, but I'm going to try to get it done. That's good. So, but, but whatever, if it is in communications, you, you kind of want to be around the game of football. You don't want to be some guy who just goes on TV and talks about every sport. You want to be involved in football. Yeah, I mean, I can talk about basketball too. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty uh, well rounded in my in my sports realm. I watch a lot of basketball, so maybe if they need me on the basketball side too, I can do that. <laughs> well, did you say that Rap is doing a, a football camp in China? That's what he was planning on doing, but yeah. because of, because of all the uh, pandemic uh, stuff going on, I don't think he was able to do it. Yeah, but that's. That's a, that's a big mind, man. That's big thinking right there. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm sure that there's a lot to teach over there when it comes to that game. Yeah, but, I mean, I think he's the one to do it, though. Yeah. What's your family think about all this that, that you know, you're, that you've signed with an NFL team? I mean, I imagine everybody's really excited for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you got some of my family, they're kind of like, some of them are nonchalant about it just because they felt like that they knew this was coming forever just because I've always played the game. And I've, some people would tell you I've been watching films since I've been three years old, but all I was doing was just watching the guys run around back and forth. I really didn't know what was going on, but that could have groomed me to, to be able to play today. And then uh, some of my family was also proud just to see how determined and how hard I've worked to get to this point and then seeing somebody that you love, seeing their dreams come to fruition is uh, pretty special. So, I mean, they were all pumped for me, whether it had been Miami, um, Washington, D.C., Chicago, uh, Indiana, Seattle, wherever it may be. Like, they would have been excited for me. So Yeah. Were those just a few of the teams that, that maybe were interested in you, like some of those cities? Uh, I think a couple of the – couple of the ones I named but I was just going I was just going off teams that yeah. well I was so about. can you learn a lot watching television on a, on a Sunday as a you know as a college player could you pick up stuff because you're not seeing the whole game yeah so I actually got to learn that in high school so I would always look forward to Sunday so we play our game on Fridays we watch some college games on Saturdays um but Sundays, I was really looking forward to it because especially Sunday night football, you would always get those uh, those like um, half-field angles to where they would put it on. If you got two receivers right here and two DBs, you'll be able to see how the play turned out. So I always loved those angles, how they were shot, and just how the analysts kind of analyze the game. And then from there, I would probably, if I liked something, I would go YouTube that player. So. For example, Richard Sherman. Um, I remember seeing Richard Sherman and seeing his emergence, and then I was like, I'm going to go on YouTube and, and research Richard Sherman. And I learned Richard Sherman loves to watch film. Uh, Richard Sherman spends X amount of time watching film. He spends X amount of time preparing his body to play. And then I was, 
I just take little things from each player, whether they'd have a different skill set for me, whether they'd be a different position or even a different sport. I take things and just try to put them in, put them in my pot, as I call it. Just try to stir my, stir the pot and just try to make it to what I can be. Man, that's it. See, now that's real analytical, man. You're, 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 you're taking it to a, another, a le- another level. You're watching these guys on Sunday. You're like, I like what he's doing. Then you go to YouTube you try to figure out some more things and, and, um, and maybe adapt some of these things that these guys are doing into your game. Right. Man. I think, I think uh, YouTube might be one of the greatest platforms, especially for people my generation, because you can learn, you can learn how to cook. You can learn how to play the – you learn how to play football. You can learn how to play the piano, the saxophone, whatever it may be. You could just YouTube it, and then you can figure it out. I agree, man. I think it's great, man. I'm being a homeowner. I use it all the time to fix things because normally, right. you know, seven out of ten times it's helpful. But um, so, so just a couple more questions for you. Like, what do you like to do when you bring up music, cooking? Do you like to do something else other than football? It seems like you're you're twenty four seven football. No, I'm not 24/7 football. That'd be that'd be crazy to say that that I was 24/7 football. But actually, like I said, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, and I actually like watching podcasts. But um, my favorite podcast is a, it's called Knuckleheads. It's through the Players Tribune with Darius Miles and uh, Quentin Richardson. They both played for the LA Clippers yep. in the early 2000s, and they bring on different basketball players and they just ask them various questions. And I mean, you could kind of say I do it to help like my game since I learned, I'm able to pick up stuff from a basketball player. And like I said, apply it to my game. So you kind of say that it's still like working quote unquote. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's entertainment to me. Uh, Basketball growing up was one of my favorite sports and I mean, now we don't have the chance to watch it because the NBA season is postponed. But, um, I mean, I just like watching the sport of basketball, just watching the highlights. And I, I like watching – I'm a big interview guy, so I like watching interviews, whether it be uh, Bill Gates, um, Elon Musk, or my favorite music artists. I just like watching – seeing how those people think. So I just try to apply to my life. You don't even watch TV anymore, do you? You just watch YouTube. Uh, it's pretty tough. I mean, the, the cable cable bills are getting pretty high, so you know, you just gotta you just gotta stick true to the Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, whatever you can do. Oh, I get it, man. That's it's that's you, your, your generation, man. You're 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 so podcasts on YouTube, interviews on YouTube, man. You, you sound cerebral. It's like there's not a lot of guys that will come out and say they they listen to interviews and they like to listen to Bill Gates and Musk and those kind of things. That's really uh, that says something about you, man. It says something about your character. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. You're trying to cool. just trying to maximize the time given. Man, listen, man. The way you're you're learning from that, you're learning from all these tools. You're learning from football film, um, man. And you got the athletic ability to go with it. You, you I, I think you're going to surprise some people. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Have you met Sherman? Have you met some any other pro athletes like face to face where you've you know, because you talk about them and you, you emulate some of them, but have you ever met anybody that's uh, made you a little bit starstruck? Yeah, I, I've actually had the chance to hit the field a couple of times with Sherman in the past month and pretty much just out there kind of like a fan, but, you know, you just got to – I'm still trying to learn from him, so I'm watching every every step he takes and how he sees the game, how he knows what offenses are doing before they even do it. So, I mean, just having the chance to – really go out there and learn learn from guys that I grew up watching. And I feel like as I start to get more ingrained into the culture and really start meeting more guys in the NFL, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be better off for me because I'm just going to start asking questions and pretty much just trying to pick their brain. And then, I mean, I feel like you just kind of, you kind of speak things into existence by pretty much, watching these guys on YouTube and then later on in life, eight years later, you end up sharing the field with them. So, I mean, just having the opportunity to go out there and play with the best players in the world, that's something that fires me up. Yeah. Well, I got to let you go, but I got to ask you one last question. Like, did you have a favorite game as at UW? Did you have one that stands out that you uh, 
individually or team wise that just man 10 years from now you'll still be thinking about it individually i would have to go i would have to go with the rose bowl from 2018 playing that game since i grew up pasadena and grew up five actually started my football career on the grass where everybody tailgates so having the opportunity going to those rose bowl games um i even sold programs for a rose bowl game back in high school and having the chance to go from selling programs to playing in the game, I feel like that's that's just one. I, I don't know. I can't really put into words. It's just something that made me proud, made everybody in my city proud to see somebody from the same soil as them grow up and play in the uh, granddaddy of them all. But as a team, though, I would say probably both the Pac-12 championships, um, especially the first one, just nobody knew – that when we won the game, there would be confetti dropping and, you know, they bring a big stage out. Nobody knew that. So just to have that, have that uh, experience and pretty much see that thing for the first time. And then the second trip around, we know, all right, once we, once we beat Utah, this is what's going to come. And then just working hard from game one all the way to game 12 or 13, whatever it was, just seeing that, just seeing our hard work, uh, show and come out um i think those two moments were pretty were pretty special yeah man good choices man that's cool i didn't know about that pasadena story that's that's good stuff it's always cool to talk to guys like you because you get to learn a little bit more about you off the field so uh um hopefully i can uh, catch up with you after you get through your rookie season and we can uh, you can recap it for me and tell me how everything went oh yeah most definitely i'd love to okay cool all right miles well thanks a lot man if there's anything i can do for you you let me know, and uh, and I'll be in touch. All right, thanks.